we need it in a lot of ways, um, but primarily we need it just to be able to relax for a week. Uh, the intensity of trying to be able to achieve this season has probably been an all-time high for us because we're trying not to be that Idaho State team that falls back. But we have fallen back, and now we can relax, acknowledge where we're at, and move forward. And part of moving forward is playing better quarterback. Uh, when we go through the final evaluation, how we played a quarterback last week, especially with Tanner, we're pretty pleased. Um, he was a couple inches shy on a couple pass plays early in the game that could have turned that thing into something a lot a lot different. Uh, the, the near the near miss to Brock Malcolm in the corner, the uh, out of bounds ruling to Madison on the two yard line which came on a drive in which we still scored. Uh, the interception that we threw going in just before half and the two field goals that we kicked. If we turn those all into seven points, man, we're talking about how what a great week uh, Tanner Goer had. So he's close. He's really, really, really close. and. Uh, the cool part is that we've had two practices since then, and he's taken his game experience and turned it into practice performance. And that's fun to see. When you see that at quarterback, you can smell the future. And not just from Michael <coughs> and from, but from Tanner. You can smell it now. It's there. It's, I, couldn't, I couldn't be more happy. In fact, this is probably the most positive, ecstatic that I've been this entire season today, based upon how we've practiced the last two days at quarterback. I'm, I'm fired up. I'm really fired up. Okay, questions? Any updates on Sanders? Uh, not available. Won't be available this week. And uh, I'll let you know next Wednesday if he's if he's up and running. I'm excited. You know, the, the, it's I'm doubly excited at quarterback because Michael has shown the promise that, that we thought he could show. And time off has made his mind quicker and faster. And it'll make him play quicker and faster as a quarterback when he eventually gets to return and I don't know that's a, a long that's a that's a date that I have not yet targeted. We have not yet targeted. But you feel comfortable moving forward. Yeah, I'm 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 very excited. You know now we're at a point in the season where you know we, we can't have a winning season. Uh, you guys brought up the fact we couldn't be in the playoffs long after that fact became evident, but uh, I was still shocked at that. I was like wow. But, um, but more importantly, we got an opportunity now to be better. Uh, we, we, to finish uh, the 215 season with a flourish, uh, especially for a great group of seniors, is our primary goal. But our secondary goal is to let a lot of guys coming back in this football team that can show what they can do over these next three games. And uh, some veteran players that haven't played as well this season now have a chance to right themselves. Some younger guys get a chance to play, uh, to show what they can do, to show the staff that they're capable of manning their position for next fall. So. Huge month ahead of us in terms of what we want to accomplish in our program, not in this season, but in our overall program. So we'll see guys that may not seem to fill as much take the field. I think what we'll do is, is we'll see a few of those guys that haven't played, you know, be on the field a little bit more, particularly on defense, where where we're just savaged by just a, a rash of of unavailability. Uh, on offense, though, we're we're, we're extraordinarily healthy given given the fact that we have lost our starting quarterback. Um, but the backup has shown that he can play also, so I'm excited at the position. I'm excited at how we're thinking now at the position. And maybe that's that's probably that's probably the greatest thing of what I like about this season. And the reality is is that as a former US history teacher, I didn't really I don't really like to acknowledge or accept history. In my history of quarterbacks that are freshmen or sophomores or first-year players is not very good. If you go back all the way through 1994 when I became a head coach, our 94 season, you will find uh, a graveyard, a wasteland of poor performance by freshmen and sophomore quarterbacks, except for one. And uh, when they're juniors and seniors, those same guys, if they hang on long enough, become extraordinary. And I can see that coming for both Michael and for Tanner. Extraordinary. Are you talking about Travis Lee as the one guy? Who's yeah, not? yeah, and, and and even in Travis's seasons, he, we didn't have we, we relied on a great defense, the best defense in the conference, an outstanding kicking game, and a very conservative game plan. By the time he became a junior, though, in 2004, he was the preeminent quarterback in our conference, except for Eric Meyer, who was pretty darn good too. There's some young guys that need to prove themselves in the last three games. Uh, Hagen Graves has manned up and, and, and shown that he can be a every down player all the time. Uh, in the back end uh, on defense, uh, 
we like Joe Martin at outside linebacker. He makes mistakes, but he also is a he sets an edge. Uh, Jason Miller, a, a true freshman from uh, Las Dimas, California, or San Dimas, California, has really shown that he's, he can be arranging and get to the ball and make plays. And when he makes a mistake, it's a home run. But he's learning. He's getting better, and he's, he's playing much better. If Sanders is back and healthy, yeah. is, there, is he automatically the starter, or do you have a decision to make? I have no idea. Good question. I don't know. I don't know if he'll be make it back this season. I mean, he really hurt. He's really, really hurt. So, I mean, he's really, really unavailable. During the bye, oh, during the bye week, uh, what do, you, do you kind of take it a little bit easier on practices, or do you guys still go? Uh, no, we. Well, the, the guys we take it easier on the guys who play have played a lot, especially the seniors <coughs> who have played a lot of football here. This is their week to rest and recuperate, get their legs under them. We got three tough games to go. Uh, it's great for us to play young guys that are also playing and correct their mistakes, give them a chance to stay in the groove and get better. Um, and it also gives us an opportunity to look at some of the real young guys that were redshirting that now move into the two deep, because we don't practice scouts, but we practice the two deep. So we get to look at some of our really young offensive linemen who are playing now because we're trying to sit a lot of those veteran offensive linemen. They don't need to practice anymore. We get to look at some of our very young defensive linemen who haven't played much this year, and, and I'm seeing some really, really, really cool things from those guys. And it's after last night's practice, I mean, you could I, I floated up, I floated up the ramp because I was, so, I was so fired up about what we're going to be and how we're going to become. Uh, and what we still have left to accomplish this season, particularly because our quarterback play last night is indicative of how much improvement we're making. Whether it shows up in the stats, I don't know. But our decision making is now good enough to where I'm not really worried about you know, how they drive the car when they turn the corner. You know, when you got kids and they drive the car for the first time, they turn that corner and go out of your sight. You go, oh, God, please give me my daughter or son back. And now I'm, I'm trusting our quarterbacks. You said you smell the future with, with Tanner. What is, so he's making better decisions, but what, what does that mean? Well, everything's right. Everything's better. Footwork, accuracy, intent, reaction, protection, <clears throat> audibling, eyes, everything. All the little nuances that make a, a quarterback a quarterback. He's, he was just better because of his game experience. Way better, way better. He learned a lot. I mean, he obviously learned from the experience that I can't just go out there and throw and catch because you can't. I mean, he, he threw three interceptions on the three most basic plays we run. Lightning, uh, Ventura, and uh, Bull. It went, it was, it was a pay, day one, page one plays, and he threw them for interceptions. And one got returned for a touchdown. The third time this season that's happened. And... Uh, <laughs> to move forward, those guys have got to avoid, avoid their own self, self-immolation. self they, they burn themselves down. And it's, that's, that's our whole issue. We're quarterback-led. We're a passing team. We're trying to run the ball. We're getting into two tight end sets and running the ball. Come on. Come on. Come on. I mean, that's like me being a runway model. That's not going to work. That's never going to happen. Is he no longer waiting to confirm his receiver? Uh, I think we are no longer waiting for him to confirm his receiver. We're just moving forward. We're just going to go back to our open sets and throw the ball, period. And if they don't spread with us, then we're going to throw for a million yards. And if they spread, an X is going to rush for a 1,000 yards. And that's the way it works. Our offense, we try to become something different. We try to go to two tight ends, pack it in, slow it down, and run the ball. And again, how do I look in a pair of guess jeans, not very well. <laughs> what point did you decide that the, the two tight end sets, and when, when did you decide that's not going to work? When we looked at the videotape on Sunday and all of our two man sets, all of our, two, all of our, all of our two tight end sets, we were running the ball and there's receivers open all over the place and we just wouldn't allow them to throw the ball in the game. Our game plan was not to allow them to throw the ball in uh, 12 <coughs> personnel, which is one back, two tight ends. But we look at these, they're wide open. They're wide open. So might as well as we're one and six. What do we got to lose by throwing twenty interceptions? But get better on every rep. Hey, maybe our defense, our offensive line, will lead us in tackles because we'll throw interceptions on every play. But we are going to make this program work because this is the style of offense we decided five years ago to play. Trying to be balanced and run the ball with our nose in the ground like we're Stanford or somebody. That is not us. We're not built for it. Quit trying to do that. It's quit it. It's we're not. Again, when it comes to fashion, you see how I dress. How, what, how 
How's the defense improved? I, mean, I know the back end. I would say good. the defense has improved in the front seven a lot. We, we're, we're good against the run in our front seven. We're not good in the defense at corner or at safety. We've digressed. We have digressed. We, we're not challenging at corner, and our safeties are are confused and way behind the play. Again, safety's like quarterback. You've got to be ahead of the ship. You've got to be way ahead of the play. You've got to see the play develop and be there as the play happens. Instead, we're looking at the play, we see it develop, and then we run to the ball, and sometimes we're there and sometimes we're not. We're just way behind the play at, at, at safety, the same way we got behind the play at quarterback. And we wouldn't have been that way had we not gotten injured. And Camino's had a rough year. I mean, he's just as a senior, he's late to the play. And we're trying to play the freshman guys, get them up to speed and get them more involved and get them to react faster. But it's not going to happen this year. It's just not. And it takes, again, like quarterback, it takes too much time. And so you're just going to have to live with the nuances that we have now. Why are the front seven better now? Uh, Steve Fafita and Roger Cooper have done a great job of coaching their dudes. Uh, Hayden, Hayden Stout's been a very much a, a mild surprise, but Jake Pettit's been an outstanding surprise as inside linebackers. You lose Mario Jenkins, one of the best players in this conference, and we're just as good as when, as when Mario played. And at outside linebacker, we've lost C.J. Hatchett, or C.J. Uh, uh, Langlo, and Joe Martin, a Richard freshman, or Richard sophomore, stepped in and done, done a really nice job. And we've gotten pretty good play from Kurt Carstetter, who misses too many tackles. He's in the backfield a lot, but he misses too many tackles. Uh, but he, he's playing a little bit better and a little bit more of a force every single week. So I like our front seven against the run much better than we've been.